Randy. Hello, everyone. We are about to kick off the celebration of Community Development Block Grant 50th, as well as the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods um, Annual Banquet, where we recognize our neighborhoods and the important neighborhood leaders. Um, so I would like to welcome to the stage uh, Community Development Director Felicia Kilgore. Let's give her a hand. Well, hello everyone. Hello. Hope everyone is well today. <laughs> Thank you, Charmaine. Um, just as she mentioned, I am Felicia Kilgore, the Director of Community Development, and I am so excited to see all of you joining us this evening. What a wonderful time to come together and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Community Development Block Grant. And, and the Columbia Council of Neighbors, 17 years of, of providing awards to communities, neighbors within the city of Columbia. So we are here today to celebrate a significant milestone in community development, neighborhoods empowerment. The Community Development Block Grant is a program that has been instrumental in fostering growth and prosperity throughout the entire nation, particularly here in the City of Columbia. At the same time, an organization such as the Columbia Council of Neighbors has been an inspiration um, to all the residents here and continue to do so for, new, for the next future years. So we are here to not only celebrate the 50 years of community development block grant program, but also the next 50 years of services and providing opportunities for um, the folks here in the city of Columbia. So let's, um, no further ado, we want to certainly say welcome and we want you to enjoy the rest of this afternoon celebration. Certainly want to give a great big thank you to uh, Ms. Teresa Wilson, our city manager here in the city of Columbia. She was unable to uh, join us this evening, but certainly want to support us with this event. And before I move forward, I do have to give a great big shout out and recognize uh, the team with community development. So I'm going to ask if you all would please stand so that you can be recognized. So they actually work hard uh, every day to provide services to the residents of the City of Columbia. So I don't want to go any further without recognizing them. Also, the members of the Columbia Community Council of Neighbors, if you would stand. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for all that you do. So before um, uh, I'm going to move forward with the, the outline as we have on the agenda, uh, we will have um, an invocation of grace by Pastor Shane Richardson. He's with the Heart Epic Ministries. And then after um, Pastor Shane comes up to give grace, we have remarks. Um, we have listed Congressman James Clyburn, unfortunately, uh, Congressman was unable to join us this evening. He had an unexpected uh, occasion to come up. So Mr. Dalton Trasvant will be filling in his shoes this evening. And so he will come up for remarks. And then I'll return back to um, the stage with the introduction of the Master Ceremony. Uh, God bless you today so much. Uh, could we please bow? Uh, Father, we thank you so much for this awesome time. We ask that you will bless our community servants, law enforcement, and all of those who volunteer to make our communities great. We thank you for the next 50 years of continual progress and growth in our communities. And we thank you for the unity and the favor that you've given us 
In Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, thanks for inviting Congressman Clyburn. He did have an unforeseen thing how it cropped up, particularly when you're waiting on airline travel and you're not flying a plane. Sometimes you get stuck. Um, and that's kind of what uh, has happened to him today. Um, I would, would like to say that uh, on behalf of Congressman Clyburn, uh, Congressman has been a very strong supporter of the Community Development Block Grant Program. And we can look all over Columbia and see the benefits of what that program has done. If you look in also into Richmond County, you can see what it's done. It's been a great program for the last 50 years. Um, as I travel around South Carolina, you see some of the smaller communities wondering, well, how can we get some of that money? What can we do? We want to do what Columbia is doing. And th those are great things. That is a great HUD program. And we're going to try to make sure that funding continues so that Columbia can all, you know, continue to do the good work that they've done. And also, I did not know that um, the Council of Neighborhoods was celebrating um, their 17th year. Um, but I'd like to congratulate you all on the fine work that you've done because some of the strong neighborhoods have really, the, uh, the strong neighborhoods that we have in Columbia have really um, helped foster some of the community development that has occurred, some of the things that we're saying by keeping, uh, I guess, undesirable elements out of some of the neighborhoods while at the same time promoting business growth and um, making sure that our communities stay safe. So we want to make sure that you please continue to work together. This is great. And we've at, we, we have often referred people to the City of Columbia Community Development Office when they talk about how can we build the types of neighborhoods and sense of community that they have in Columbia. Now, um, I would like to say, Felicia and community development folks, y'all know y'all used to be in the same building with us, um, and we miss you all from being downstairs. We really do. But you're still right around the corner. Um, and once again, on behalf of Congressman Clyburn, I would like to congratulate you on his 50th anniversary and can please continue to do the good work that you all do. Thank you. put my readers on. So I was sitting right next to, um, everyone referred to him as G. Uh, he said, Felicia, don't read all that. But I'm going to give him his accolades today. Um, so I am introducing Dr. Tony G. Green. Tony was born in Durham, North Carolina. After graduating from Durham um, Public School System, he earned his Bachelor of Science in Radio and Television from Western Car Carolina University. In 1990, uh, Dr. Green pursued Master of Theology at Shaw University Divinity School. Later, he was called to be an uh, urban morning show host with a radio station in Greensboro, and that's where he met his wife, Alicia Green and she's a student and graduate of North Carolina a and I have to say Aggie Pride, if anyone knows what North Carolina a and is all about. So, Mr. Green actually has over 30 years of experience working in radio, from country station to urban station, and 20 years of gospel station, where he ser currently serves as program director and vice president of, 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 of programming. Uh, in 2004, Dr. Green created the radio program Another Level, a show program specifically for young adults with the motto, We Are Giving the Youth the Truth. Airing on stations throughout South Carolina, in 2005, Dr. Green recommitted the call from God to reach young people by teaching and preaching the gospel in a way that lets them know that their dreams can come true. 
In October of the same year, God blessed Tony and his wife with their first child, a son named Alan Michael Green. In January 2009, Dr. Green was licensed as a minister at the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road here in Columbia. In January 2014, he was appointed as elder. October 2017, Dr. Green received his Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Dr. Green motto is, God once shared with me that dreams are not a figment of your imagination, but windows to your future. Without further ado, Dr. Tony G. Green. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening everyone. All right, tonight we have come out to have a good time. I am honored to be here. Um, it is a blessing to be a part of this event on tonight. I am Tony G. Green, the Vice President of Programming for Glory Communications Incorporated, which owns WFMV here in Columbia. Now, I've been there 21 years, and each and every year that I get the opportunity to go out, I always remind people of this fact. WFMV was the first 24-hour gospel station in the United States. And it's right here in Columbia, South Carolina. As a matter of fact, over at Millwood Avenue. Forgive the voice, it's been up since 6 a.m. this morning. So we are honored to be with you on tonight. We're going to not prolong the time because we know that everyone has to get back to school or kids that don't have to get back to school. How about that? And you feel like it's a school night, but it's not actually a school night after all. And uh, after that introduction, I feel like preaching, but I better not do that. <laughs> All right, so on tonight, we're gonna to bring to you first a gentleman that really needs no introduction. If you've ever been in Columbia, born in Columbia, passed through Columbia, know anything about Columbia, you know about Mr. Bob Cole. We're gonna bring him to our front right now. He is the former mayor of the city of Columbia. And as a matter of fact, when I moved here, via Greensboro, North Carolina in 1995. He was the mayor then. I spent three years at WWDM where I met the DJs for this evening. Good to see them on tonight. Went back to Raleigh Durham for a couple of years, came back, he was still the mayor. <laughs> I said, well, Mayor Bob is gonna be the mayor for the rest of my life. But he decided not to do that. So let's welcome to your front. He is an attorney and, of course, the former city leader of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'll call him by his government name, Robert D. Coble, a.k.a. Mayor Bob. Thank you, G. Um, you're right, I did uh, serve, uh, uh, some people thought I was never going to leave. Now, let me just say a couple of words of introduction. First, I've got to correct what Dalton said. Now, it is true Dalton is not the congressman, but for every project I ever did, that city council did from 1990, or actually 1993, uh, till when I left, the first call we made was not to Congressman Kleiner, Certainly we wanted to meet with Congressman Kleiner, but we wanted to call Dalton and get the lay of the land. And uh, Dalton, thank you for all of those projects. And uh, uh, I can't wait to call E.W. Cromartie on the way home and tell him you were here and he probably will ask for some CDBG money uh, <laughs> uh, from someone. Let me also uh, recognize, I know we have a lot of city council members here and. Some of them will be introduced, uh, Tina and uh, 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 Daniel Rickman. But I do see Tyler Bailey and uh, Tina next to him. Uh, that's a great team there. And uh, they, uh, I think, together uh, with other council members, uh, will do an outstanding, are doing and will continue to do an outstanding job. Uh, I know the other council members are uh, very active with neighborhoods, and uh, I think that's very important. Now, one thing, and I don't know if there are any Richland County Council members here, but having a, a good team with Richland County uh, Council is of critical importance uh, to getting projects done. Uh, not all the projects are in the city of Columbia. Most of the projects uh, are uh, the city and the county. In many cases, the city, Lexington County, and Richland County. 
Uh, so you got to get along with everybody if you want to get anything uh, done. Um, uh, I saw so many friends here, the fire chief and others, uh, just want to uh, just say again, I'm so thankful for being here. And Felicia, thank you for inviting me. Let me just briefly say the following. What have been the keys, or at least the keys uh, from 1990 uh, till 2010 when I was mayor, uh, and I was on county council before that, Congressman Clyburn was the key of getting federal funds. You have to have someone who is your congressman or congresswoman who understands the system, wants to have projects that are done that are improved, but also is, a, is making you accountable. Uh, the one thing we never would do would be having a, uh, uh, a, a, a project that was not accountable, was not what we said it would be, uh, because Congressman Clyburn uh, demanded that. Uh, Mayor Rickman, I was just praising you. I hope the other uh, colleagues will tell you uh, how much. Uh, I have to say this, when I was on council way back when, <clears throat> Daniel Rickman was on council, so I uh, got to know him uh, very well uh, for all of those years and uh, just delighted to see he and our other friends on council uh, making uh, uh, progress. Let me talk about some of the projects very briefly that were very important. Now, not all of them uh, were funded entirely by CDBG. Uh, but CDGB funds almost always were a catalyst in those projects. <clears throat> now, every project had the backing of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods. Uh, back then, uh, that was the most important uh, group, and I'm, I'm certain still is, uh, that we have in terms of getting support for projects, getting support for identifying projects. You know, what are the needs in the community? I think y'all continue to do a tremendous job with that. But Reed Street, if you remember, if you go to Reed Street right now, it's a, a beautiful part of town. It uh, is on the uh, other end is the House of Prayer. Uh, there's public housing and private housing all through the area. But Reed Street a number of years ago was not bad. It, 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 was, a, uh, it was a tough part of town and it took at CDBG, a lot of planning and uh, everything to make sure that project occurred. I will tell an E.W. Cromarty story, and if anybody knows him, please call him tonight, tell him I mentioned his name a couple of times, if you don't mind. But we were on the bulldozer trying to knock down one of the buildings to start some of the projects, and lo and behold, the wind went the other way. And E.W. and I were covered with dust from top to bottom but it, we were very proud of that project. Uh, Barnumville Road to C.A. Johnson, another area where CDBG was part of the solution, part of the monies, homes, and infrastructure. Uh, CDBG was always something that you could use to jumpstart a project, to uh, had the criteria you had to follow, uh, but housing and infrastructure was very important. St. Anna's Court off McDuffie, a uh, very important project. If you look now at over there, you see combined with the uh, revitalization of the Columbia Housing Authority, you've got a whole new projects uh, that, you know, aren't CDBG, uh, but Hope 6 and others, and now additional projects. Those have made a real change. And I'll never forget, we were at the first one with Drew uh, Wellness Center and Drew Park. Uh, and that na new neighborhood. And Congressman Clyburn spoke there. And he said that Celia Saxon, I believe, uh, the homes there were what was needed in 1948 or 1950. That was what was needed. But it's something new is needed today. The modern homes, uh, single family attached, th those types of things. So it's always a function of change of making improvements, always very important. And finally, Drew Wellness Center. Um, Drew Wellness Center and, uh, is now, I think, a park that is used by everybody in town. Uh, my wife goes there twice a week uh, to swim. It, it's, a, it's a great facility. Uh, and it took a lot of work, it took a lot of neighborhood work, 
Now, many of those neighbors um, are no longer with us, uh, but they were instrumental in, in making the case for that uh, Drew Wellness Park. And let me finally say a word about the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods. Uh, when I was mayor, that was the center of our city, and, and I know it still is. But back then, the Council of Neighborhoods were instrumental in identifying problems, but more importantly, identifying solutions. And, you know, when your neighborhood leaders are, know how the system works, know what is possible, but know how things have to be done, but can advocate strongly, but advocate uh, and know what they're asking for, that's a powerful combination. You know, if you just have folks who are mad, uh, it's hard to get uh, make progress. But if you know how folks to say we need to come together and form a partnership and go see uh, our congressional delegation, go talk to the state delegation, and see if we can get some money to uh, build housing, you can make progress like that. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my, been my honor to be here. I don't know I give very many of these speeches uh, 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 like I used to, uh, so I always have to have some notes. But the city of Columbia, I view the city of Columbia and certainly uh, the uh, development corporations and, and all the staff, uh, as well as uh, the neighborhoods, I view it like, like I do Carolina football. I don't care who the coach is. I don't care if they're winning or losing. I'm for them. And I'm for y'all. And uh, thank you so very much. And just appreciate y'all being here. All right, we're going to have comments right now from a fresh new councilwoman from the city of Columbia. It's Tina Herbert is about to come right now. And I was reading on Facebook, I think it was, several months ago, and I happened to see something that she posted and found out that she knew a little something about Raleigh, North Carolina. So I saw her concert about a month ago. I said, Tina, what you know about Raleigh, North Carolina? She said, Tony, you don't want to know what I know about Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> She gave me everything she knew that I'm not going to tell you right now. However, I am wondering, I think she would probably pull for the Wolfpack men, but probably not the Wolfpack ladies, but we'll see. <laughs> Welcome, Tina Hood. Uh, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Mr. G. And I really was wondering what all he was going to repeat. He <laughs> did a good job. Um, and Ms. Felicia, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this uh, event. I did make a note in my notes that whose idea was it to put me after Dalton and Mayor Bob. But that is OK. We are up to the challenge. It is great to be here with you today to celebrate two incredible milestones, M National Community Development Week and the 50th anniversary of the Community Development Block Grant Program. We must recognize the importance of the Columbia City Council of Neighborhoods, serving as a voice for our city residents and our neighbors. CCN is celebrating its 17th year of recognizing neighborhoods, community servants, and other critical individuals dedicated to improving our communities. And I agree with Mayor Bob when I used to work for the city. Um, CCN was an essential part of pretty much all of our decisions that involved the community. Uh, and I have to admit, um, there was some times that if, if we got a call that we needed to go to CCN, sometimes we were excited, and then sometimes we weren't. Um, but what we appreciated is that we knew we would be held accountable for what decisions we were making, about to make, um, and we knew that the participants were serious about their neighborhoods, they were paying attention, and they wanted the best. 
Um, and I'm really excited to see as it's rebuilding. COVID impacted so many different organizations and it's been wonderful to watch you all rebuild. The CDBG program stands as a testament to the transformative power of community development. It has been instrumental in helping local governments and organizations address the unique needs of our communities. We have witnessed neighborhoods being revitalized, economies being rejuvenated, and countless lives being uplifted through this program. And there is no way that I could talk about CDBG without talking about one of my favorite programs um, from back in the day, as I call it. I mean, it was the facade program. Um, back then, the OBO used um, CDBG dollars to do the facade program, and downtown was the first big one that we did. And we spent $451,000 in CDBG dollars, and we leveraged that and brought in $6.1 million in private investment. And that, to me, is a testament of the power of what CDBG dollars can do. As we look to the future, we must continue to promote community development principles that support equity, sustainability, and resilience. We must ensure that every community, regardless of its size or its location, has access to the sources and the opportunities necessary to thrive. Today, let us all commit ourselves to the values that underpin community development, collaboration, innovation, and empowerment. By building on the legacy of the CDBG program, we can strive towards creating vibrant, resilient, and inclusive communities that benefit everyone. And on behalf of the Community Development Committee, which I chair with and Tyler Bailey, uh, Councilman Bailey, um, and Councilman Brennan, I think, is on his way or coming. He's our other member. Um, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with community development because it does allow us to be innovative. Some of our other departments you know, is stay, stick to the rules and, and the specs. But in community development, we've had the flexibility um, to be creative in the solutions that we bring to the community. So, CCN. Uh, community Development Department, all of our um, partners, our development corps, our, the folks that receive our awards, um, thank you for your dedication to strengthening our communities. As we celebrate National Community Development Week, let's look forward to the next 50 years of growth and prosperity with hope and optimism. We know that with our collective efforts, and I have to say, um, I always tell people, if a citizen, if you're asking me to do something and it only takes me to do it, you're not asking for much, right? If you really want to make change, it is going to be something that is going to have to require at least four votes and support by council. But if you're asking, if I can do it by myself, I want you to ask for more, ask for bigger. So with our collective efforts, let us continue to make a positive difference in our citizens' lives. Um, now, I heard y'all say something about North Carolina a and T. I'm North Carolina Central. <laughs> I attended North Carolina Central. So, um, but I still, you know, I'm all game calls. All day long, all day long. Thank you all so much, Felicia, thank you for the opportunity. Ah, North Carolina Central, huh? Okay, that's the Eagles, that's um, Fayetteville Street. Uh, my grandparents lived on both Fayetteville Street and Burlington Avenue, actually one on one side, the other on the other side, and I lived down off of uh, McDougal Terrace and Plum Street. Um, being from North Carolina, especially Durham, Raleigh Durham area, you're either a Tar Heel, a Devil, or one of the Wolf Pack. So, of course, I am a UNC Tar Heel, although I'm not proud of that at this moment. <laughs> and uh, Tina, of course, representing North Carolina, uh, the North Carolina State Wolfpack, so we'll see how they do over the weekend. Now I'm going to bring to your front, however, a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> Let me try that again, a Dallas Cowboy fan. Okay, all right, all right. <clears throat> now, 
Before she comes up, I'll let you know she's been dogging out the Commanders, uh, the Panthers, and she hadn't mentioned my Steelers, however. I'm not getting no love up in here. I mean, who is your team? Come on, you can say it out loud, don't worry about it. The Eagles, Mistake. Um, who else now? Who, the Chiefs? And, and the, well, I told you she dogged out the Panthers already. So, well, well, anyway. So, let me tell you just a little about her. Of course, she is the uh, serving principal, deputy assistant secretary for the housing, fair housing and equal opportunity at the Uni uh, U.S. Department and of Housing, excuse me, and Urban Development. She is a graduate, however, of Howard University School of Law, New York University, and Brooklyn College, and a member of Dallas's alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. Please welcome, there you go, there's a clap, all right. Please welcome to your front, Mr. Mita L. McCain. How about those boys? <laughs> well, first, I just want to thank you for having me, Ms. Kilgore. It was such a pleasure chatting with you and, and getting to know you and seeing everybody. And let me tell you something. I had no idea that this, in addition to the 50th anniversary of CDBG, that you were also celebrating neighborhood associations. And so I had a good chat with Ms. Kilgore, and I got to tell you, as a former neighborhood association president, it kind of triggered me. <laughs> so I know all of the hard work that you do, all of the things you do to get your neighbors involved. Um, and let's just say that I'm a recovering neighborhood association president myself from Dallas, Texas. But seriously, I actually, um, I'm embarrassed to say that last month was my first time coming to South Carolina, but it was, but it was intentional on my own free time, not for work. Um, my, uh, one of my college kids, one of my college daughters was on spring break, and so we went down the road to Myrtle Beach. Um, but we also had a time to really kind of take in some of the amazing rich history that South Carolina has. We had an opportunity to go over to, I, I might pronounce this incorrectly, to the Hopsui Plantation, I think, near Georgetown. And there we learned uh, quite a bit from, I believe her name was Dr. Vinnie Dees Moore. I don't know if anybody know, know, know of her, but she gave us some rich history about how the uh, enslaved Africans were brought here but really have contributed to this region of our country. So that was really exciting to know. I always like to learn a little bit more when I visit places. But I mean, even, even beyond those times, right, beyond the 1700s, beyond the 1800s, you all have a rich history in Miss Fleming, right? We heard about Rosa Parks, but Miss Fleming, right? She sat down and would not move and would not give up her seat on that bus. And so you've got that history, and then we move forward. And I understand you've got the rich history of Miss Simpkin who we all know about Brown versus Board of Ed. Not too many people know about Ms. Simpkin and the work she did to desegregate the schools and other things. So give yourselves a hand, South Carolina. I mean, because that, that Briggs versus Elliott case was huge. I mean, we all know about Brown versus Board of Ed. And even though Brown versus Board of Ed was decided in 1954, it took decades before people truly implemented it. I know at least in Texas it took a while, in Dallas it took a while. It was always, all the way in the 1970s sometimes when people actually did not truly um, abide by Brown versus Board of Ed. But let me say this, while that was happening, while that was happening, there was this little preacher man who uh, was from the South. He moved his family up to Chicago where people actually were begging him to come visit. Please come visit, please come help us. And so he moved his entire family from the South up to Chicago to join hands with those who were trying to fight housing discrimination and segregation. And that young man was called Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Maybe you've heard of him. <laughs> right, right. And so it was, and I always like to make sure that people understand the story because we know a lot about uh, uh, the education space when it comes to civil rights. We know a lot about voting rights, but it's the history of housing rights, right? Uh, sometimes we call it the last 
batch of the civil rights. Um, so it was April 4th. What is today? April 4th. April 4th when he was assassinated, right? And so here we are. This is very timely. And it took that assassination to move the country to finally pass the bill that he was working on, which was the Fair Housing Act as we know it today. And so there's April 4th, and then you have April 11th is the actual, this next week, will be the 56th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act of 1968. So that's, last year was a big year. We celebrated that 55-year um, anniversary. But today, we are here celebrating the Housing Act that has everything to do with CDBG. And that's really kind of hard to get off the tongue. I don't know about everybody else. CDBG, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. <laughs> and so while that was going on, then you, know, you fast forward, and you've got the 50th anniversary. And Hand clap to you for celebrating the 50th anniversary of that. Hand clap to you. And so a lot of people know about the main parts of the Fair Housing Act. And if you don't know, I'll just say real quickly that the Fair Housing Act has seven protected classes, right? We've got race, color, national origin, religion, sex, including gender identity and sexual orientation, uh, disability, as well as familial status. And familial status is just a, fa a fancy way of saying people under the age of 18, because actually people do discriminate against families if they have kids in the home. And so we've got those seven protected classes, but a small part of the Fair Housing Act that not too many people know about that actually was part of that original 1968 Fair Housing Act is the part called the Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing portion of the Fair Housing Act. Um, it's hard to roll off the tongue as well. But what does that mean? That means in addition to not discriminating, it is imperative for HUD, that, that would be us, um, and all of HUD's programs and activities, which include our, 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 our program participants, like those who receive CDBG funds and public housing agencies, to affirmatively further the purpose of the Fair Housing Act, right? And so they had that vision way back in 1968 that we want to stop the discrimination, but we want to also get over the hump, right? And go out of our way to make sure that we are embracing all of the policies that the Fair Housing Act is about. So I just wanted to share that with you today. Um, and, and that's really about taking kind of meaningful action. Now, in 2021, um, right when the Biden-Harris administration began, uh, we received a memo, HUD received a memo from President Biden saying, hey, I want you to make sure that we fully implement this affirmably furthering fair housing part of the act, right? And so what we did was we made sure that uh, it, pieces of it had been repealed in the previous administration, we brought it back, and so every single program participant of HUD actually certifies regularly. Would you say that? I know this is my CDBG folks over here, my staff over here, right? So they certify every time they get funding from us that they are affirmably furthering fair housing. And so that's just something I wanted to share with you. We're in the middle of finalizing a rule. In 2021, we passed an interim final rule. But right now, we're trying to finalize a rule. And it's my hope that that will come out in the coming weeks. Everybody in the world keeps asking me about it. Just hold on, join our listserv, you'll get the press release, and you'll see when the final rule comes out. So think about this. When taken together, when taking CDBG funding, and then you take the power of the Fair Housing Act, right? These can be an amazing, powerful cocktail for change, for positive change, okay? Because as was said earlier, CDBG funds, they create jobs, right? They pervert, pr preserve affordable housing. They fund disaster recovery, and some of you all here know about that, right? They invest in critical infrastructure projects. They provide vital services to those who most need it, right? And they serve as a framework for transformative change. And we heard Mayor Bob talk about some of that transformative change earlier, things that I, I, wish, I wish I could stay longer to see. I have to come back and see some of these neighborhoods you're talking about. Um, and so we know that dollars across the CDBG portfolio are critical resources that actually meet the local needs and can catalyze other activities, right? And so let me just share this. Since CDBG's exception 50 years ago, folks, do you know since for the last 50 years, HUD has invested $170 
billion with a B dollars in urban, suburban, and rural communities across the country. That's powerful. more granular here. Let's get a little more granular. I am proud to say that Columbia, since 2021, has been allotted $3.1 million in CDBG funding. Kudos. And plus 1.5 in CDBG CARES Act funding. Not to say anything about the, 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 the other funding that you guys get from home and hopper, right? Um, so kudos to you, to the way you're using this money. Um, continue doing what you're doing. These funds, let me say, you take these funds, you join funds with, number one, Columbia Community Development Department's mission, and if you don't know it, listen up, it's mission to improve the quality of life for Columbia's citizens by providing economic housing and social opportunities, right? And you take these funds and you join it with number two, your aim, your aim to increase home ownership and build neighborhood capacity while offering excellent community service. Now let me tell you something, I wanna focus right here on the next generation. That is a cocktail, folks, to really, really impact the generations to come. Certainly people are here today, but generations to come as well. Would you agree with me? I, I absolutely think so, I absolutely think so. And, and let me just spend a little time here telling you a little bit about some of the work that's taking place over in um, the, we call it CPD. Uh, my colleague, uh, Marion Mollingen, actually, um, Mollingen McFadden, is my colleague in the Office of Community uh, Planning and Development. So that's why we call it CBD, C C CPD. And so they're working day in, day out, actually, to deliver on the administration's promises. And so they're doing that. She's doing that with their, her team. And what they're doing right now, they are publishing proposed rules, actually, to strengthen HUD's programs and really kind of make them easier to use. They're launching funding sources to boost housing supply. And they're highlighting ways that annual grant funding can be used to meet the community's greatest needs. All right? And you should also know this. Know that the White House actually has launched a housing supply action plan. Communities all across the country. And I'm going to guess that Columbia is no different than other communities are in a housing crisis. Would that be ac accurate for Columbia? That would be accurate, I think. And actually, uh, not far from my hotel, I saw people who appeared to my uh, understanding to be unsheltered. And so this is an issue all over the country. This is a housing crisis all over the country. So that's what that's all about. And I will say, while uh, congressional reauthorization of the home project, which home program, which hasn't happened since 1992, while that's taken its own course, it's really significant for some reform to take place. But in the meantime, HUD actually plans to issue proposed regulations for the home program very soon. So look for that as well. I just want to tell you some of the things that we've got on the table. HUD also has undertaken a comprehensive review of the home statute and regulations with the purpose of identifying previously un under-exercised statutory flexibilities. So I know that's not CDBG funding, that's home funding, but it, I think it might be something that you all might lose, right? <laughs> Right. And so also last fall, HUD published the CDBG Housing and Activities Notice, okay, and that updated and expanded notice and describes how grantees can use CDBG funding to actually support and promote the development of the decent, accessible, and equitable and affordable housing in our communities. And that notice updated and expanded the guidance really in a wide range of housing-related activities like acquisition, housing counseling, adaptive reuse, rehabilitation, reconstruction, manufactured housing, all of those types of things. And also recently published a proposed rule to make CDBG and Section 108 easier to use for economic development and really for larger transformative types of projects. And just last month, for those of who you happen to work with tenants or, or are aware of, of tenant issues, um, HUD issued a tenant background check, Know Your Rights uh, webpage for folks. So you might want to tell folks about that if you have some of those issues going on where you are. So let me just say, I could go on and on and on about some of the things we've got going, really trying to help you all and help communities across the country. I tell you, let me just testify that as a single parent, 
When my children were young, if it weren't for that after school program that they had at the public school where my kids were, that allowed me to work my nine to five to support my family. Without that after school program that was funded by CDBG, I'm not quite sure where the answer would have been, come from a small family. And so using CDBG funds is a very much a local issue, as you all know. Because you all, these neighborhoods, you guys know what the issues are, you know what the needs are, right? Between the staff and the neighborhood groups here, you know what you need. So let me just say, Columbia, Columbia's friends, Columbia's partners, you all, know that HUD is celebrating the 50th anniversary of CDBG right along with you. And let me say, let's just imagine together Imagine, as, as we use these funds, as we use other funds, as we use these funds to leverage it, let's imagine generations of young people who don't know what homelessness looks like. Generations of young people who don't know what segregation or discrimination looks like. And generations of young people who don't know how it is some communities in the past were not thriving. Let's all together have that as our North Star as we go forth. Congratulations, Columbia. Good luck. Come on, Mr. King, once again, put your hands together for her. Thank you for that word for tonight. Right now, we're going to have Ms. Felicia come and uh, present us with this. Celebratory cake. First, let me um, thank Ms. Demetra and McCain for delivering such a wonderful presentation. Updates that HUDs uh, have planned, the new action plan that is in the works, um, the new uh, updates with the CDG. I thank you. I thank you for delivering such a wonderful presentation. Celebration, celebration of the cake. And what is a celebration without having a cake? You know, you can't celebrate your birthday without having a birthday cake. So we have a nice um, cake that's been prepared for us for this evening. I uh, want to certainly utilize it as a symbol of all the work that um, CBG has supported over the years, all the progress, the projects, the activities that we have uh, completed and also for the next 50 years that we will continue to work hard to support the city of Columbia with more activities and improvements to our neighborhoods. So I want to invite um, um, Bob Cole up with me, um, a Dalton Transplant, Ms. Demetra McCain, and Mayor Rickerman for the um, cutting of the cake. We spoke to the city of the current mayor of the city of Columbia, South Carolina, Mayor Daniel Rickett. I, I don't like podiums. Uh, good evening, everybody. How we doing? All right, come on, y'all. We'll get a little louder than that. We're celebrating. How we doing? There we go, there we go. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't start off. I'd love for our community development staff to stand up for a moment and be recognized because none of it is work we've heard about that happened in my life. You know, one of the greatest assets that we have in the city are our employees. Um, I tell people all the time, they say, what, what's great about Columbia? And I said, it's people, 100% it's people. And we see that every day as we go through our community and it's growing. Um, but we couldn't do a lot of things we, we want to do. You know, you look at our community block grant, you heard all those projects, but we want to take it further and deeper. We were asked to talk about what the vision of Columbia is, plain and simple. We want to be the number one city in South Carolina. And to be the number one city in South Carolina, we have to have strong neighborhoods, strong businesses, and a, a government that works with its community. 
We have to rebuild. And if you've noticed over the last two years, City Council has made a priority to invest in our community, to invest in our neighborhoods, it's in our parks, into our employees, into the infrastructure, and build up the parks that are growing, but the neighborhoods. So we just finished the middle market study. And it verified what we know, which is we have close to 47,000 parcels in our community. We have about 30,000 single family homes. But guess what? Less than 47% of those are homeowners. So when we talk about a vision and being number one, homeownership is, is one of our number one priorities. Um, where's my housing authority folks? Will y'all stand up and be recognized? I, I want everybody to just give them a right hand for our funding housing authority. Not only are they working to rebuild, we give them a little hard time every once in a while because it, just like everybody, we have to do that. But they're also helping us get qualified candidates to put into housing for home opportunity. And that's the most important thing we, we can do as a community is do that. So how are we doing that? We're starting off with lots that we've actually owned through our various groups. Uh, our TN and uh, uh, group, where, where's Harrison, everybody? We all stand up and be recognized as well. All right. <laughs> Working together and leveraging partnerships, public-private partnerships, leveraging dollars, going after every federal grant there is, leveraging it with what we can get from the state, and being creative, going after it differently. You know, we need, a, we need close to 16,000 units in our community over the next decade at every level. Attainable housing, but good quality attainable housing. So as we're going out seeking partnerships today, we're going to visit people in their hometown. I want to know what they built in their house and I want to know how they maintain it and how they work together. So when we're bringing partnerships here, we're talking about long-term partnerships with quality housing. We need workforce housing. But this middle market study showed us it's not just single family housing we need. We need to be able to look and figure out how we can get quadruplexes, townhomes, duplexes, condominiums. We have an aging population. 85% of our needs in this study show that it is baby boomers downsizing, single mothers with no kids at home, and millennials who choose not to take a home ownership at the long minimal. So we need to make sure we address it. One thing we have in Columbia is parcels of land. So we in the city are taking our parcels and starting to build homes on that, partnering with builders and mortgage companies to provide an opportunity for affordable housing, home ownership, under $200,000, so somebody can have the beginning and what we're doing with that is we're giving those people that lot. So that is their equity, matching that with some of the federal programs for down payment assistance. So that we can put somebody in the house where they got instant equity and opportunity that they can have a home and be able to pass that on hopefully in the future. What is the quickest way to the individual wealth? Home ownership. So we're, that is a priority for the city, but continuing to invest our infrastructure making sure that we have roads and sidewalks in every neighborhood that is of high quality. And that's a big challenge because as y'all know, 72% of all of our roads are owned by the state. So we have to be creative on how we address that. But leveraging projects with our common, our COD, Will Brennan, our council member who's here is the head of the COD, making sure that we're getting our fair share and we're leveraging that. Taking our Section 108 money and looking at how do we leverage that? Can we do some more loan programs on that so that we can fill the gaps that folks need to provide housing? Looking at the different tax credits, taking advantage of the in, um, Inflation Reduction Act where we can get the direct pay and put solar panels and better weatherization and take advantage of the construction um, credit so that we can upgrade the appliances so they're all energy efficient. So we're thinking not only about the quality of the construction, but long-term the energy efficiency and lowering those bills. Because we do have people in our community that pay more in electric bills in the winter and the summer than they do in rent. we got to change that. So our commitment for the future 
is not only to find more resources, more partnerships for our community development, our, our partners like TN and EZ Inc. and others to provide housing at every level, but making sure we, real, re, we are rebuilding our neighborhoods. And that's one of our strongest things. We lost about 9.5% of our population over the last decade. We have neighborhoods that have multiple, multiple empty lots. So going in there and rebuilding those communities one fabric at a time. How do we have the strongest and best city in the state? By having strong communities. And we have to build that where neighbors know each other, where they're watching after each other, where there's quality housing, and that no matter what community you're in in our city, you have the same opportunities. And that's what our goal is. So when people ask what our vision is, our vision is to make sure that everyone has quality housing, everybody has an opportunity to have the job that they want, the opportunity for advancement. And we look at that every day. Everything that we're doing as, as a city is about moving the needle forward to make sure that each corner of our city, no matter I don't care what, what area you come, you know, we got nine gateways, nine gateways. So each one of those gateways ought to look the same. Each one of those gateways ought to be filled with restaurants, businesses, houses, opportunities. People shouldn't have to go outside the city to live. Everyone should have the opportunity here. So when we continually commit our goals, it's about really making sure that those opportunities are here. And we're not only doing it for today, but for tomorrow. Because let's, let's be realistic. We want this for our children and our grandchildren. We want when our kids go away to college or when they come back, that they have the same opportunities that they could have in any other city. They don't have to go to Charlotte. They don't have to go to Greenville. They don't have to go to Atlanta. They can stay here and have that job. They can afford to live downtown. We want our city to be connected. We finish those greenways and make sure that every community has an opportunity to take advantage and access to our rivers, our greenways, and our parks. How do we do that? By creating opportunities, partnerships, trying different things. The one thing that we will do in the city is we will try a different route. And we're going to try it without the feel of fa failure because nobody cares about failure. People only care about how you recover from it. So, you know, every day I just want y'all to know is our, our city council goes to work, our city administration, every day it's about how do we embed Columbia? How do we advance the ball? How do we make sure that we get to be the number one city? We're number fifth city in the southeast for people to move to of quality of life. You know, no offense, I want to be number one. Because I believe we're number one. We, we have not sold ourselves and we have not believed in ourselves. And now we do. Telling me there is a vibe in Columbia right now like I've never seen. And what's so great about it is, is all of you and everybody that works at the city, everybody that lives in the city is part of You are all part of the piece of the puzzle. And that's why we're going to be successful. Because we're working together. There's more collaboration happening in Columbia right now than we've ever seen. And we know it's working because Frank Rainwater came to see us. And for the last decade, we've been at a 2% growth. Folks, he showed us over the last two years, we've grown 4.3%. We, we have doubled where we've been for a decade. And you know why that is? Because of everybody in this room for everybody in the city. This is a truly a we tour. And we're so excited. Are we getting everything right? No. We're not getting everything right. Are we perfect yet? No. But do we strive every day to do that? 100%. Our goal is to make sure that we provide the best, most effective uh, and efficient service to you, our citizens, at the same time leveraging every dollar we can to continue to invest in our community in, in every aspect. So we're going to be in your parks, in your streets, but we can't do it alone, we need your help. So I, you always have to leave a speech asking for something. Well, I'm asking each and every one of you to look back at your neighborhoods, engage your neighborhoods, let's figure out Help us figure out where we can improve in your neighborhood. There are trees overhanging. Is there an option for more lighting? 
What can we do to make sure that we get rid of the litter? We're fighting at the state house to get fines so people will quit illegal dumping in our areas. There's so many pockets that I visit every day where people are dumping. How do we address that? But we need your help. We need your feedback. We can't do it by ourselves. We're only going to be able to do it. So my challenge to you is help us become the number one city in South Carolina. Show us, call us, email us, do whatever you need to let us know what we can do to improve the quality of life in your neighborhood. And we're going to do everything we can. Sometimes our hands are tied. But we're going to try to find a way because no is not the first word that comes out of our mouth. It is left to figure out how we can do it. I do want to take an opportunity to make sure that, that our newest council member, Tyler Bailey, stand up. Ms. Herbert, you heard from her, stand up. Will, stand up. Stand up. Well, these folks are working every day for you to make it better. The countless hours, the phone calls, doing everything they can, innovating, sending articles. If y'all could see the traffic of email that we share with each other about what other communities are doing and why can't we emulate that here or taking the best of what we learn from our colleagues if they've gone to NLC or the U.S. Conference of Mayors. How do we take that information and bring it back and make sure that we're doing those things in our communities? But we also need you to be there. So think about what we can do. Share information. If you got ideas, let us know. The best ideas that we've gotten have come from employees and neighborhoods. So let's help us build every corner. Let's have the number one city in South Carolina and Alicia, thank you for what y'all are leading. Community development, once again, thank y'all. This is your celebration. Thank HUD. Because I'm going to tell I'm going to miss Secretary Fudge. Uh, not only one, because she likes to drink bourbon like me. And we shared some drinks. But being a former mayor, she so understood the challenges that we had. And she knows where the gaps are in the program, and she just wasn't there long enough to understand what she had to do and why she had to do it. But we will miss her because she was an advocate for us as cities directly. And then, Dalton, you know, you need to, to pass on to Congressman Clyburn. Because when we go to Washington, there are two people that, that make everything work for this city. That's Jim Clyburn and Lindsey Graham. They get on the phone together. They call FERC. They call FEMA. They call the Department of Transportation as we're going after grants. They team up together to make sure that Columbia is getting what it, it should get, our fair share. So I appreciate that. Mayor Coble, that was our... Mayor Coble is the one who showed us how to, to, to bring in the community and be part of it. He also taught me how you could get out of a room very quickly if you needed to. He was a master of... Uh, of of getting out. He could be at a dinner and next thing you know, where's Bob? And we're, 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 we're stuck there talking to him. But, you know, we really appreciate you, Bob. We continue to do your service. You're continuing to service everybody. But I just want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve our community because there's nothing, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I love my job every day. This is the greatest experience I've ever had in my life that we have an opportunity to move the city in, in, in a direction and that we see the investment, we see the return, and, and our community is embracing what's happening out there, and they want, they want us to be the number one city, and that's, what, that's where we're headed. We are going to be really the capital city, and let's not forget it. Nobody? Why did you come? Nobody wants to win awards tonight? Are you sure? Okay, well, 
We're going to find out anyway. I'm gonna, I, I want to know who's going to win awards tonight. So Mr. Harrison Greenlaw is about to come right now, the president of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods, and walk us through tonight's awards. Come on and give him a hand as he comes. It's a pleasure to be here tonight um, and be part of this celebration. I can tell you as president of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods, Community Development, and I will particularly point out Charmaine, uh, is absolutely wonderful in helping us facilitate what we need to do and helping keep us sort of in line. So, I won't do it, no. <laughs> We've got all other good PR people here. that uh, She gets embarrassed when I compliment her for her work. All right, Columbia Council of Neighborhoods wants to first thank the awards committee, uh, which is representatives of neighborhoods across the, the uh, city for their diligence in their selection of our five awards. Uh, we thank the nominators from various neighborhoods that took the time to nominate uh, their neighborhood or their representatives, uh, their event coordinator, their best volunteer, whatever, uh, for these awards. Mindful of our limited time, I'm gonna read a brief highlight of each award winner, announcing the neighborhood or person, and after receiving, excuse me, after recognizing all five awards, I will ask the recipients or their designee to come forward be, be uh, recognized, and then the officers of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods has their awards for them, and we'll take some pictures uh, over here and present those awards to them. So first is the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods Neighborhood of the Year. This neighborhood creates a sense of community through involvement by strengthening the relationships among its residents. Their outreach is inclusive from parents and young children to homebound senior citizens. They survey members to provide for their uh, needs. They support, their support includes regular food drives, providing bicycles for children, or providing food delivery to homebound, homebound residents. The 2023-2024 CCN Award for Neighborhood of the Year is Galaxy. Congratulations. <laughs> And it's, it's also good to see some involvement from some of our neighborhoods beyond just downtown. Galaxy's out by the VA hospital, if you don't know. Um, next, uh, the neighborhood program of the year. This neighborhood embraces the culture of an urban forest and advocates for tree preservation and wildlife management. Sounds like blue zones, doesn't it, Mayor? Uh, <laughs> For two years, they have hosted an annual tree giveaway. Approximately 20 trees are provided each year at the cost of less than $200. Um, neighborhoods are asked to apply, are given adv advice on the most suitable trees for their particular yard, provide instructions for planning and care, and have trees delivered on National Arbor Day. Participants frequently express their delight and gratitude uh, for a program that provides roots for the future residents of that neighborhood. The neighborhood has built a symbiotic partnership with the USC Belcher Audit, uh, Arboretum, and they partner with the South Carolina Native Plant Society to acquire native trees at low cost. The CCN Award for Neighborhood Program of the Year goes to Sherwood Forest Neighborhood Associations for their Forest Friends Program. Hopefully these, these awards give you an idea uh, of things that you might be able to do in your neighborhood. And we cover a lot of these uh, programs and their uh, services in our Columbia Council of Neighborhood uh, meetings. All right, number three, uh, Neighborhood Volunteer of the Year. This nominee has demonstrated exceptional leadership qualities that benefit the community in multiple ways. 
For many years, this neighbor has organized national night out programs, solicited support from local businesses, reaching out to neighborhood organizations, gathering school supplies and food, and even cooking. The recipient act actively participates in committees while encouraging others to become involved and attend monthly meetings. Uh, also involved in arranging space and refreshment, bringing new people into the organization and maintaining a relationship with law enforcement. This person is an active member of the neighborhood community garden, raising and distributing vegetables with anyone who asks, and embodies the spirit of a true community leader through selfless dedication of fostering unity, advocating for inclusivity, and ensuring the well-being of all residents. The 2023-24 CCN Award for Neighborhood Volunteer of the Year is Pat Jones Myers from Hyatt Park, Keenan Terrace neighborhood. The Columbia Council of Neighborhoods Neighborhood Volunteer uh, Lifetime Achievement Award is um, dedicated his life for 22 years to his neighborhood board from president to chair of the traffic committee. His organizational memory about Columbia and his neighborhood served to inspire and foster action. He was instrumental in planning or hosting neighborhood events, including National Night Out, holiday events, Fourth of July Parade, and ho hosting artists for the art crawl. Championed efforts to promote commercial growth, yet professionally engage in tough conversations to ensure the preservation of our historic significance. Um, so he served on the City Design Development Review Committee, assisted city growth, development in appropriate ways around architectural conservation districts, and instrumental in forming the coalition of downtown neighborhoods, which brought together eight downtown neighborhoods to advance and protect the neighborhoods close to the city center. Through his professional and civic activities, the recipient deeply believes Columbia, believes in Columbia and invested time and talent to all aspects in helping make our city a great place to live and work. He served on various boards and collaborated with stakeholders across the city to redefine the zoning codes and ordinances to help Columbia align with best practices found throughout the rest of the country, advance master plan and build support but for the Bull Street District, uh, developed and continually looked for ways to expand the Greenway, a project where the city continually sought his guidance, uh, built strong relationships with city staff and city council to advocate for and support the quality of life of all citizens of Columbia and encourage other neighborhood leaders to find their voice to speak up for the neighborhood. The recipient passed away on May 19th, 2023. However, his legacy remains. The Columbia Council of Neighborhood Awards for Neighborhood Volunteer Lifetime Achievement Awards goes to Paul Balknight from the Cottontown Bellevue Historic District Neighborhood Association. respected individual. And our last award is the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods Neighborhood Friend of the Year. Uh, the recipient firmly believes their neighborhood, that neighborhoods make Columbia unique and spent his eight years on city council advocating programs and services that strengthen neighborhoods and serves all citizens of Columbia. Specific meaningful initiatives touched include the landlord rental ordinance and the short-term rental ordinance. By hearing the concerns of neighborhoods, many times coming to Columbia Council of Neighborhood meetings, and he steered co co uh, collaboration between landlords and neighborhood residents. He helped work with the spots, uh, shot spotter alert system that Chief Holbrook and the Chief of Police and the city have often talked about. Uh, and as it covers seven miles of the city. 
Um, he had the vision to see the development uh, problems of five, developing problems of five point bars and working to amend the building codes there and closed unsafe bars in the area and reduced crime. Code enforcement, a top priority was working with diverse neighborhoods and helping the city better manage constituent requests for services. Transitions board to improve homeless services and promote increased interaction with the city. Funding for neighborhood projects, directing hospitality tax and other funds to neighborhoods. Traffic calming, working on projects to calm traffic throughout the city. Fireworks ordinance, sp sponsoring this ordinance at the request of citizens. Uh, the recipient made himself readily available monthly to meet with citizens to hear their concerns and had an exceptional track record of following through with citizens on their request. Uh, River Alliance in Finley Park, recognizing the importance of rivers and parks in our city uh, and continually work to advance programs and funding for both. Uh, he was a main driver for the city to fund the renovation of Finley Park in 2023. Like CCN, this recipient encourages groups of neighborhoods to work together, and he supported the founding of the Coalition of Downtown Neighborhoods and the Five Points Neighborhood Association. The Columbia Council of Neighborhoods presents the CCN Award for Friend of the Year to retired City Councilman Howard Duvall. And now if I can have the recipients or their designee uh, please come forward. And I'll also uh, ask the officers of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods to come forward and um, we'll be presenting their trophies to them. So first of all, we'll ask the um, recipients or their designee to please stand here and we will applaud you for your dedicated work to the city and to neighborhoods uh, and helping our city. And then if you'll step over uh, and have your awards presented to you and we'll do pictures uh, there. So we can't, we won't go over our designated time here with our awards. Um, but let me end by saying that um, we appreciate the work of these volunteers. Uh, and as, uh, I want to thank our ushers tonight that volunteered, uh, the Banquet Committee and CCN Awards Committee for their work. Also want to recognize the important work of the community development to perform for Columbia and their support of the Columbia Council of Neighborhoods. Um, and thank neighborhoods for being here tonight uh, to support uh, their neighborhoods, learn about different grant funding money uh, hear from leaders, not only from Washington, but across our city, talking about the importance of neighborhoods. I was particularly pleased to hear uh, Mayor Coble talking about uh, involvement of neighborhoods from well beyond uh, current times. So we hope to continue that, that part of the award and the recognition. So thank you all for being, allowing us to be here with these awards tonight, and we will turn it back over to the MC. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's give everybody a round of applause once again. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. That's actually going to conclude tonight's program. We want to thank all of our speakers, all of you for coming tonight. Once again, give yourselves a round of applause. I have to. Hello again, everyone. Thank everyone for coming out. Um, we want to recognize our sponsors, um, our platinum sponsors, Office of Business Opportunities. Please raise your hand. Thank you. TN Development Corporation. Columbia Empowerment Zone. Where are you? Community Development Department, of course. Shout out to our staff, our goal sponsors. South State Bank, First Citizens, Assurance Financials, Homeless No More, our silver sponsors, 
Palmetto Associations of Realtors. Where are you? San Novis Bank, as well as State Farm. And just want to recognize some of the neighborhoods that are here. They are over there getting their awards. Hollywood Rose Hill, Whittemere Springs, Shandon Neighborhood, Cotton Town. We have our uh, Hyatt Park. And we definitely want to recognize our first responders, Columbia Police Department. Columbia Fire Department. Once again, Columbia Housing Authority. Come on, give it up. Special shout out to our Public Relations Department. I know they are tired of seeing my face from press conference day of service now here. Um, shout out to my sound guys, the DJ. Ronnie Grant is actually a recipient of the Individual Development Account Program. He came through my program years ago. He's still DJing from that same equipment. Thank you. And also, we bought this beautiful backdrop. Please utilize it as you're going out. Uh, some of our team will be there to take some of the photos. And again, we want to give a special shout out to the man of the hour, the master of ceremony. Mr. Tony Green, woo, -woo, woo And DJ, you may play that song. We're gonna close out. Celebration. And I also wanna recognize the, the committee as well. So come on everybody, it's a celebration for the 50th. Thank you.